concrete walls There's a place for us Where we could go, where we could be alone Between city lights, we don't have to hide I wanna go, do you wanna follow? learn something today oh yeah primitive fpv is feeling this track hmm i'm feeling this track too oh my god what's up guys how you doing fpv fly riding alaska in the house what's up guys i'm joshua bardwell <laughs> you're gonna learn something today you're gonna learn something today Oh, audio sounded great, Alex. Thank you, Tony Briz. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Ooh. Oh, my face is here. My face is here, freshly fried. Give it a minute. I like to I like to let you guys get some Oh fuck. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Are you for real? No, there's sound. No 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 no. Don't fool with me. Don't fool Oh, you broke my vibe. You broke my vibe. I had such a good vibe going on that intro. Boom, boom, do you want to follow? And then somebody was like, there's no sound. And I was like, oh, damn it, no. There was sound. Come on, don't mess with me. Don't mess with me, you guys. Don't mess with me. <clears throat> that's, why I need, that's why I need Alex over there in the corner running sound for me so I can focus on my performance. So I can focus on, 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 on the, you know, the streaming. No, no, don't mess with me. Miguel Espinel is lying. Hold on, I'm going to check. Yeah, um, so I have a button over there that switches my audio in my, people are like, why do you wear headphones? And because so it's not like a gaming or something most of the time. And one of the reasons is I got a button over there that I can switch that lets me monitor what's going out on the stream. <laughs> so good. Okay. This is my mason jar. Mason jars are fantastic cups. You can use them for canning vegetables and stuff, but. I haven't done that in a long time. And this is a strawberry watermelon. This stream is sponsored by Mio. Mio Flavor Squirts. <laughs> it's a strawberry watermelon. Yeah. I'm wearing, uh, today I'm wearing my race day potato shirt. 
I wear this. I, I wear this shirt to show that I have a sense of humor about the, some things. <clears throat> you get mason jar dribble primitive FPV. You got to up your game, man. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Welcome to the stream, everybody. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. And every so every so often, I just like to point out to you guys that when I say you're gonna learn something today, you guys know this. You're all my, you're all my, you know, you know this. But for anybody who's new here, and, and every so often somebody comes around my chat and, and say, or my, my comments and it's like, man, you are really stuck up and douchey. Oh, you know. And the first thing I say is, you're going to learn something today is a slogan. It's like when, when Lay's potato chip says, no one can eat just one. That's an old reference. I'm old. But, you know, it's a slogan. It doesn't literally mean that no one can eat just one. Aha! I ate one potato chip and I stopped. Screw you, Lay's. You're liars. No, it doesn't. And, and the other thing is, it's just a slogan. But the other thing is, it's, a, it's, to, it's, I, it's, I try, it's to remind me to live up to it. When I say you're going to learn something today, that's for me as much as it is for you. It's that uh, it keeps me focused. It's like a mission statement. I want you to learn something because it's easy to get distracted and think, what videos can I make that will get clicks? You know anybody who does that? It's easy to get distracted and think, what is a hot product that I could review that will sell affiliate sales and make me money? But the, the thing that I hope differentiates me from some other folks who are out there is that I want, I, my goal is to, you learn something. And in the me, you know, while you're learning something, hopefully you'll click on some affiliate links and may I'll make a little money and we'll all be happy. But that's so you're gonna learn something today. Let's see if you see if we live up to it. But the first thing we're gonna do, thank you, thank you, chat. Bye bye, Adrian. Sorry you have to go. Um, <clears throat> I'm not calling anybody out. I everybody's got their own thing that they're doing. You know, some people do different kinds of content. This is just the kind of content that I like to do. It's a good thing because I'm not as good at the other kinds of content. So it's a good thing. Hmm. Alrighty. Hello, Leif, Leif Erickson from Sweden. Uh, is that your real name, or is that are you name? Are you actually named after the famous explorer Leif Erickson, or is that just your username? It, being from Sweden, it could be either. <laughs> All right. But what I want to show you guys, I always start the stream, before we get to the Q&As, I always start the stream with just a little bit of entertainment news of the day. What I want to show you guys today, as you guys are rolling into the stream, is, did you watch the Rotor Riot video from today? If you didn't, you should. A guy out there, his name is Vincent Strelo, and people are like, well, who is this guy? He's just a dude. As far as I know, he doesn't have a company, and he made a three-inch octocopter. A three-inch octocopter. It's eight three inch props and we flew it and you can watch the road right video if you want to because like like is there a point to that but what i want to show you guys today is how freaking fast alex vanover is i'm like head of the alex vanover fan club i guess i don't know but it, look he said we finished the video and we were like okay now we should let alex rip it and alex did this ready hang on let me sure i got my my desktop audio on Where's the audio? Well, I don't have any audio. Well, okay. Oh, here we go. There it is. Sorry, guys. Alex is not doing his job. Back up. Where's Drib freestyling it? Here we go. Let's try one more time. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh my god, I can't even keep up with what you're doing well, as a spectator. It's just happening too fast for me. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. You found the prop wash. See, that's why I wanted to race it. I was trying to do as many corners as possible, because honestly, in a straight section, the speed felt a pretty, pretty similar to my 5-inch quads. And what I noticed in the corners is the control was really, really good, but it was almost terrifying. Oh! the hell? How did you do that? It just accelerated so fast. I was 
solving around the trees as fast as I could. If I'm going around a tree or something and I'm trying uh -huh. to 180, it felt like the 5 inch quad kind of carried its momentum through, so it takes longer to stop it and then re accelerate uh -huh. in the next okay. direction. What was scary and awesome about the octocopter is I would stop and they would just stop me there and right. accelerate straight in the next line. <laughs> oh, Did you see that? I'm gonna back that up real quick. Look at this. And right. accelerate straight in the next line. Right there. That's the point where I'd have crashed into that tree. His reaction time is his reaction time is so fast that when I spectate him in the goggles, I can't keep up. Like I just my my brain cannot keep up with how fast just watching him fly. Never mind flying as fast as him. So it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Oh my goodness. People ask how can I get better at flying and I think the answer might be race. <laughs> but yeah, uh a license to drive I'm with you man. Not fast enough for that. I can't do that. I can't do that. He's so it's kids, it's the kids. I just don't have the reaction time because I'm older. That's it. That's exactly right. Anyway, yeah, no prop wash on that thing. It had amazing prop wash handling. Didn't crash so good, but so Rotor Riot is talking about we we were like well if it if it takes off if the episode is popular and people seem to want to build it maybe we'll like do a licensing deal with this guy to cut and sell his frame um, so it seems like it's popular and hopefully we'll hear more about that if you guys want to build one of those it's pretty pretty freaking cool anyway Brenton Smith asks, do you think perhaps because you're not in control of the sticks, the effect is enhanced for not being able to keep up and the wow factor? Maybe, but I feel like, like, I feel like mo much of the time when I watch somebody else fly, I am ahead of them because I'm not thinking about the sticks. I'm only thinking, I can just pit, you ever, like if sometimes if I watch a replay of a video game I played, I'll notice things that I missed while I was playing the game. I'll be like, oh, there was that dude right over there. And I didn't see him for two seconds. But in the replay, I'll be like, oh, there he is, clear as day. But because I was so focused while I was playing the game, I had tunnel vision. And I think when you fly, you often get a little bit of tunnel vision. And when you're watching someone fly as a spectator, you're a little more wide open. But, like, I just... I literally, watching him fly, I'm like, okay, he just crashed. No, he didn't. He's still in the air. Like, just... You know, here's the thing. You know that moment when you're flying and you go, that's it, I just crashed, disarm. Watching Vanover fly, I do that every three seconds. <laughs> Except he's still in the air. So, mm, there you go. Mm, anyway. So, okay. Uh, here's what we're doing. In case you're new here, let's just make sure. And if you're new here, hello. Say hello in the chat if this is your first live stream of mine. Welcome. Um, here's what we're doing. I got the chat right here. See, there it is, chat. Great. Yeah. A little. And questions coming in here on the chat. What's my lap time on liftoff? Joseph Dawson, Stingy and I did a quad camp live stream. Oh, I'm sure that the replay isn't up anymore, but Stingy and I did a quad camp live stream. I'd have to go look and lift off at what the at what the time is. They probably still have the leaderboard. Um, Jer, Jer Builder, thank you. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome to the live stream, friend. Um, so I'm going to be answering as many questions from you guys in the chat as I can. And basically, I'll just look up here and pick one and answer it. Is it possible to bind an XM Plus to an X Lite? Yes, it is. But an X Lite Pro with the new access protocol, you'll need to update the firmware to get it to support D16 mode. See, just like that. If you want to... Siati. Oh, my God, dude. What are you doing? You're putting dongs in my chat? Welcome. Everybody welcome the, the king of micro power loops, Siati FPV. We'll, we'll talk about him more in a minute. <laughs> um, if you want to make sure that I get your question, you can hit this dollar sign right here and throw a couple bucks at me, and it pulls your question out into this window here for the super chats. You can see, wow, holy crap, place it here. Wow, a 50. That's a, that's an extraordinarily large donation. Thank you, place it here. Thank you very much. Um, in this case, I, I think I helped you off, off stream, offline, and uh, this is uh, just super generous. So that'll make sure that I get to your question if I miss it in the big chat. But I always do my best to get the, big, the, the regular chat questions as well. And over here on the left is, this is my Discord server right here. It's a chat server, and if you want to get access to that, I do monitor that during the live stream as well. Hello, Chamber. Hello, DJ Pop. Hello, CM Reaper. Hello, Frank Barajas in Cologne, Germany. So 
For those of you who, uh, if you want to join up and get down to the Discord server, the way to do it is to, there's a link to my Patreon down in, below the video, and that's how you get access to that. But you don't have to. I'll answer your question regardless, but if you want to. <laughs> Siati, please, don't make me put you on mute, man. I like you. Siati FPV, y'all got to check him out. If you don't know Siati FPV... And he recently moved to Atlanta, and he's hanging out with Stingy and Schizo and Steel. So he's only going to get better, right? Yeah. So check him out, Siati FPV. It only took me five years to learn how to say his name correctly. Okay. L enough of that. Enough of that. Look at that. We're all, we're, all, we're all just standing around and shooting the shit and not answering questions. What are we, 11 minutes into the live stream? Well, let's get some questions answered. Somebody asked in the, uh, uh, hey, uh, what about that ER349 in Drew's video at my house? That is not, so this is the Diatone 349. This is a damn good three inch. It might be one of the best three, in, it's definitely one of the best three inches you can buy. Not for, not if you want to do high def, it's for racing. I don't know if you want to do high def, but for three inch racing, it is damn, damn good. But that is not what I had at my house. I had the Diatone 369. What is that? The 369 is the 6S version of it. And it's, um, you fly it with little 850 milliamp hour 6S batteries. So, and I thought, well, what's the point of a 6S 3 inch? I mean, isn't the point of 6S like more applicable to big props? But it flies pretty good. I actually don't have a 349 to fly them back to back. It'd be kind of nice. And frankly, the 369 is 200 bucks. The 349 is 140 bucks. So it's 60 more dollars to get the 6S version. And I got to tell you, I'm I'm hard pressed. I mean, is 6S better? I don't know. I haven't flown them back to back, but is it $60 better? I think that's questionable, but it's a damn damn good quadcopter, yeah. No, they do have an HD version of the 349. That is true. Thank you, Waxfire. They do have a HD version. Bidirectional D shot asks all day error in the Discord. Bidirectional D shot does it transmit full telemetry or RPM only? It transmits RPM only all day all day error. So bidirectional D shot is not intended to replace ESC telemetry. ESC telemetry carries RPM information. It also carries ESC temperature and it carries voltage, battery voltage. I think those are the only three things it carries. Yeah. So if you're getting RPM information, the problem with ESC telemetry is it doesn't update fast enough for the bidirectional, for the RPM filter bidirect to work. So they invented bidirectional DSHAT, which updates basically as fast as the motors update, the RPM information updates. But if you want, oh, current information, of course, that's the other thing. If you want current information, yeah, thank you, UAV Tech. If you want amps, then you need to have by you need to have ESC telemetry as well. Um, I think most of the things that ESC telemetry carries are not that interesting. Um, if you have bidirectional D shot and you're getting RPM that way, and you have current via like an analog current sensor, then you don't need ESC telemetry for temperature. Who cares about temperature and voltage? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Hypermotor asks, "Am I microdosing like Bach grinder?" Now, if you don't know what that is, I'll let you go to Bach Grinder's feed, and you can uh, you can read about that um, if you want to. What microdosing is and what he's talking about. I do want to say um, Bach Grinder is, despite the fact that you might get a certain impression of his personality from like the fact that he uh, has tattoos on his face, from the fact that he talks about smoking weed and stuff. He has his own line of weed paraphernalia. You might get a certain impression about his personality. I got to tell you, I mean, I don't like claim to know him, but he is just a super cool, super nice, dare I say it, even sweet guy. He is, he, he's a fundamentally, he strikes me as like a hippie, a, a gentle person. And uh, a lot, some of the things I've been hearing some people say about him really bug me. Because some people look at him and they say, "Oh, he's got he's got this look," and they think he's a certain he. They think he's a degenerate, and he is. Well, some people would say he's a degenerate, but I don't think I wouldn't say that. 
he's had a hell of a life. I read a uh, Vice interview that was done with him before he was went by the name Bot Grinder and talked about his life uh, as a uh, drifter, I guess you could call it. He, he, rode, he rode the rails, literally, for a while. Um, he's been homeless. He's been voluntarily homeless. He's been in homes. He has, you know, got a drug habit, kicked a drug, drug habit. And just who he has turned into uh, now in his life is a really deep and interesting person. And if all you see when you look at him is the stereotype of a guy with tattoos on his face and a, a joint in his hand, then really screw you. Screw you. You were wrong. And you're missing out on some, you're more than just him. You're missing out on really good people because of your own stereotypes. So don't do that. I, I'm not saying, there were people in the, some of the Facebook thread I was reading saying, well, look, I have kids. I just don't want my kids being exposed to that stuff. I'm not, I respect that. That's your decision. You're not, in that point, you're not making incorrect judgments about him. You're just saying, here's what I want for my kids. But there were other people who were going, oh, he looks like he's got a meth habit and a, and, and he probably, he's a bad person, you know. And I'm like, whoa, you like, you don't even know the guy, you know. Hmm. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway. He does, he does talk about weed a lot. I mean, but some people really like weed. Some people just really like weed. Josh L. wants to know, am I going to do a video looking at black box log and adjusting filters as well as looking at the effects of changing PIDs in relation blah, 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 blah. No, because Josh L. UAV Tech, Mar he's here in the chat, by the way. Mark Spatz, I'm giving you so many shout outs for this. Mark Spatz did, an, um, and Mark, Mark does it better than I, I, I got like, I got like this far into PID tuning and went, okay, I, I know what I need to know. And then I moved on and got into other things. And PID tuning is less necessary than it was. But then PID tuning got crazy deep with filters and latency. And, and I'm like, wow, there is a lot there. And for 95% of us, it's never going to freaking matter. But Mark Spatz didn't feel that way. He went deep. And if you are, Josh L., if you're interested, check out UAV Tech. I'm going to paste a link to his channel in the chat. He has got started a PID tuning where he starts with filter tuning and, and moves through P and D and so forth. And you got to check that out if you want to know more about that. Puma Jodeki, UAV Tech, a sellout. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I hope you're just joking. You're being sarcastic, Puma, because there's what is he selling out for? I don't know. Mark, do you have some new sponsor that I don't know about? Let's look for the sellout over on his page. What is UAV Tech selling out to do? Let's see. I don't know. I don't see him pushing any products. <laughs> anyway, all right. So that's that's it. Thomas Fisher, my whole Betaflight configuration got deleted after a crash. How is this possible? I don't know, Thomas. That's a good one. Um, I mean, it's stored in flash memory inside the microprocessor. So, like, it's not even – I have no idea. It is not the first time that I've heard of that happening, though, Thomas. I don't know what caused it, though. Yep. UAV Tech is looking for sponsors, everybody. <laughs> Watch out, UAV Tech. That is a double-edged sword. Uh, you get sponsored, and then all of a sudden you think, oh, great, I got a sponsor. I'm going to get free stuff, and I'm just going to keep doing whatever I was doing, right? But then the sponsor is like, hey, we need you to make some videos. And you're like, oh, this is a job. <sighs> there are times when I know that I could reach out to a company and say, hey, would you send me this thing so I can review it? And they would just do it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it this time because I don't want somebody looking over my shoulder going, hey, when are you going to make that video? Why don't we use, use circular polarized antennas on our radios? Ask Joey Boots FPV. Joey, that is a freaking good question. I don't know the answer, but you know who does know the answer? I'm not going to. I'm not going to make the mistake I made in a previous live stream and, and put my messenger up on stream. But Alex Grieve, I am going to ask Alex Grieve right now.
I'm going to ask him that right now. And if he gets back to me with an answer during the chat, I will post the answer. I don't know the answer. Maybe he, oh, Private Island FPV is, suggests that uh, he's mistaking UAV Tech for UAV Futures. UAV Futures is Stu from Down Under who says, uh, what does he say? Good day. He says, good day. And welcome to UAV Futures. The UAV Tech is not UAV Futures. Anyway. When is TAC going to join Rotor Riot? Asks Mac pa Max Power FPV. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not in charge of that. Any update on the JBF7? Asks Ion FPV. I am working on a new flight controller. Uh, it's going to come out as an F7 and an F4 at the same time. Exact same board layout, just a different processor and a different price point. Um, the current state of the project is that we have approved the the. F well, the way it works is they make they basically make like two of them that they solder by hand and we test them to just see that the fundamental board layout is correct that the traces all go where they need to go and everything works then we order like 10 prototypes that we test and then we order like so it's we're, we're in the process of testing prototypes no release date at this time um yeah why is his flight Josh L wants to know why his flight controller is not identifying an SD card in the slot. Could be a bad SD card, could be a SD card not formatted correctly, and the SD card slot itself could be bad. Those are a couple of things that could be it. Mr. X Savage X wants to know any tips on repairing a cracked carbon fiber arm. Um, the tip that I've always heard is to sort of fill it up with super glue and use baking powder to cure the super glue. I don't know, and then you clamp it. You fill it with super glue and you clamp it in between two, like a sandwich of wood to clamp it down. The bottom line, though, I got to tell you, man, once you crack an arm, like I would just I'd be inclined to replace the arm or replace the plate. I mean, you can repair it, but it's never going to be as strong as it was when it was new. Let's see here. Let's see. Puma Joe Decky wants to know if he should purchase a pre-made quad or build one from scratch. Here's what I say about that. You got to learn to build. If you buy a pre-made quad, you're going to crash it. You're going to break it. You're going to need to repair it. And so you're not going to know how to repair it because you didn't build it. If you build it, by the time you get to the point where you're flying and breaking it, you will know how to repair it. But it's going to take you longer to do that. And many people struggle with the learning curve of building. Um... So what I suggest you do is if you just can't wait to get into the air, buy a ready to fly. But then immediately, don't wait, start saving up for your build and start your build so that while you're flying the ready to fly, you can, sorry, I got a smear on my glasses. I got to clean my glasses. While you're flying the ready to fly, you're building and learning to build the other one. Um, it's just sort of a toss-up whether you're going to get so frustrated by the learning of the building process that you give up on the whole freaking thing. There are many very, very good ready-to-flies these days, though. You definitely can get a great one. Sorry, I'm talking to Alex Grieve. Yeah, super glue is what people use to repair the, uh, I think that's what they use. Charles Blackwell wants to know what I'm using to hang the quads on the wall behind me. Charles, there are 3M command hooks. They stick onto the wall with this removable adhesive. They stick really well. And then um, then uh, you use like, just like a rubber band to hold them to the hook. <laughs> Michael Neal says, Steel is selling quads for $1,100. I'll build the exact same quad for $700. To which I say, Kiss is expensive. <laughs> when I heard a Kiss quad runs like $700, I thought, wow, that's marked up a lot. But when you put the Kiss electronics on it, it actually comes to a fair amount of money. Um, I don't know who would pay $1,100 for one of Steel's quads. But okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Good for him. I would like to sell one of my quads for eleven $1 hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. I would like to have a. I would like to have a. What did he buy? Lotus, a Lotus Elise. Yikes! 
Anyway. What's the command for min throttle? Asks Masayi. What's the command for min throttle? My motors won't spin. I, um, let's look at a flight controller. Where's a quad? Where's a flight controller? Here's one. So, let's see here. You want to adjust... Come on. There you go. You want to adjust min throttle. You're going to go to the configuration tab. And depending on the motor protocol you've got selected, you can adjust min throttle right here. You don't need to do any command. You can adjust min and max throttle right here. Your motors won't spin. Min throttle is, yeah, that's what you want to raise if your motors don't spin when you're armed. If you're using D-shot, it's going to be motor idle throttle value. That's it. It's just so much money, $1,100. I mean, I guess if it's $1,100 for $700 in parts, maybe. Let's get the super chats out of the way. We got a couple more super chats coming in. Uh, Gregory Hurst, get my head back up here. Gregory Hurst, thank you uh, for ten bucks. Uh, do more events. I'll try to make the next one. Thank you, Gregory, for your donation. Uh, I did a race at my property this weekend. Had some folks come out. It was a big. I thought it was a big success. Pick a Johnson. Thanks for five euros. No question. Place it here. Gives another ten bucks and asks dumb question. Why will my HDOs not start recording? I have a new SD card in them. Um, place it here. If the card is larger than 32 gig, the, the DVR board can't recognize it, so that's one thing. The other thing I would do is, assuming the card is 32 gig or less, go into the menu in the goggles and format the card right there in the menu. And if it won't format, then sometimes some cards get a little funky and they won't read. So, But I would format. Maybe it's not formatted right. Let's see here. Jim Bubba wants to know about setting up his Nirvana with Crossfire. So here's what I think. The Underground FPV, I think the firmware hasn't updated in a while. Um, I believe that the latest developments in Underground FPV Nirvana is in the RC Group's Nirvana thread. So I'm going to go to RC Group's Nirvana thread and go to the last page. And they are pushing out... They're pushing out firmware builds for it. Here it is. Like, here's the latest one, which was released yesterday. So if you want the latest firmware for your underground FPV Nirvana, I suggest you go to this RC Group's thread right here. Paste it right here and download and flash these hex files that are, that this these people are building. Um, I think, I haven't tested this, but people are telling me that this build is more featureful and ahead of the Underground FPV build. But you can read about it and talk about it there on the thread, so. Mm, yeah, okay. DJ Pop wants to know, why is my video doing this? All right, DJ Pop, what's your video doing? Yeah, yeah. Yikes. That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. But I would say, DJ Pop, Fat Shark has a new, a new firmware for the DVR. And if you haven't installed that, maybe it will fix the issue. It fixes the black blinky screen issue. That sure sounds like what you're having. So I would say go to this, this page and try uh, try downloading and installing this uh, DVR firmware update. Doesn't look to me like that's goggles on the wrong channel. No. Edward Pereira wants to know, do UARTs need to be set according to the flight controller's requirements or can you set telemetry to any UART to get it work? Um, Edward, if you have a F7 processor on your flight controller, you can pretty much put anything on any UART. It doesn't really matter. If you have an F4, there are some limitations. Um, typically, you'll, protocols like SmartPort and SBUS will only work on the designated UARTs or pads. Hmm. Yeah.
let's see. Steve M suggests that I consider RPM filter and my board's target. Look at V2 of the Seal Racing F7 where he has a solder bridge to choose LED or M4 if running RPM filter. So I don't have to do resource remapping and solder M4 from the... Hmm. Well, that's an interesting point, Steve. I'm sorry to say that the layout of my board is is finished at this point. I don't think we're going to redo it. But if my board couldn't do RPM filter, that would be disappointing. Hmm. I got to tell you, man, though, I don't know if... I, it sucks that it takes so long to design a board these days because, like, we've got the design, we tested the prototypes, we're about to go to production, and if it turns out it doesn't work with RPM filter, it's we got to go back and redo all of that, and that sucks. Yeah. Alien RTF. Mr. Steel Alien RTF. Jeezy Crow. Well, I guess I guess that's one way. Does it come with the GoPro? No, it doesn't. Wow. That is incredible. Somebody add up how much the freaking... Somebody add up how much the freaking parts on that thing cost. Wow. Very interesting. Well, he's doing okay with the ethics thing, huh? Good for him. Let's see here. INFPB says, please explain. Would you explain what? I don't know. <sighs> Let's see here. No, I don't think it comes with the GoPro. Dave Hernandez, thanks for a dollar in the super chat. Air Wolf PV, thanks for five bucks. What are your thoughts on the new octocopter rotor I was flying? Well, I mean, I think I said it all in the in the video. Uh, it flies really interestingly. It has really good acceleration and speed. It just uh, the frame as it stands lacks some of the durability of a five inch. So it was very interesting though. <laughs> Avalet FPV can build four Betaflight quads for that price, and maybe they would be as good as a steel uh, alien, but, I mean, at the end of the day, what people are paying for when they buy his quad is the knowledge that it's going to fly like his, at least until... Here's the, here's the thing, though. Here's why it doesn't make any freaking sense. Let's say you buy... Let's say you buy a steel alien for $1,100, and by the way, I am not in any way... If you spend all this time building up your brand, building up your, your following, and then people are willing to pay $1,100 for your quad, hey, more power to you. Freaking, you got to make, you got to pay the bills. And, you know, next month somebody could kick you out of the top spot. You're not popular anymore. Make your money while you can. I don't in any way blame or criticize him for charging that much. But here's the thing. You as a customer, you spend $1,100 on a, on a quad. The third time you crash it, a motor is going to go out of freaking balance, and then what? How many times does he rebuild his quads? He rebuilds them, I'm sure, all the time because every pilot rebuilds their quads all the freaking time. So it's going to fly perfect for three batteries, and then it's going to fly not perfect. And what did you spend $1,100 on? You could learn to build a Mr. Steel, well, maybe not a Kiss quad for eleven. dollars I'm saying it. What are you paying for? What are you paying for? If what you want is a quad that flies good, there's no there's no substitute for learning to build and learning to tune and just learning to make it happen. Spend eleven hundred dollars, hire somebody to come out and teach you to tune with that money, and you're you learn to fly your quad. It's not selling out, IV. I don't think it's selling out. There's nothing wrong with selling out. Here's the thing. <laughs> you let's talk about UAV futures, Stu, because when people because it's a common accusation that he's a sellout, and I don't make that accusation, but it is a thing that people say. But he has a massively popular YouTube channel. Y'all be watching his videos, and y'all be clicking his links and buying products. So when y'all are like, "What a sellout!" Y'all are buyouts. Y'all are buyouts. You can't sell out. 
You can't sell if nobody's buying. When he puts those videos up, I put up a, I know because I look at my analytics. I put up a tutorial video, gets 3,000 views. I put up a review of a product, gets 12,000 views. Y'all want to see reviews of products. <laughs> so, you talk about somebody like UAV Tech here who's just making videos about filter tuning and PID tuning. Look at his views. 3.2 thousand, 1.3 thousand, 3.7 thousand. There's nothing wrong. Oh, here's 11 thousand beta flight 4.0 filters. That's a good one, right? You compare that to somebody like, now UAV Futures has a lot more subs. Don't get me wrong. But nobody's a sellout without some buyouts there trying to buy the things he's selling. So you keep that in mind. The next time you accuse Stu of being a sellout, and then when a new product comes out, the first thing you do is you rush to his channel to see his review. There's two sides of this coin, guys. Okay. <laughs> Rant over. Can I build a good quad for the same money as a wizard? Asks Adrian Bravo. Well, is the wizard a good quad? I think about $200 is a good floor for what I would call like a good quad. Maybe you could get it down just a bit cheaper than that if you're willing to push. Maybe like 180 Somewhere around 200 to $180, I think. If it's any cheaper than that, you're just making a lot of compromises. And that's okay. If you look at quads like the Tyro 99 and the Tyro 79, these are build kits. And they are like $89 or $100. They are not good quads. But if you want to just get a kit and build it and crash it and then it's crap and it's breaks and... There's nothing wrong. That's okay. You you know that people if they get people into the hobby, there needs to be something at the hundred dollar price point. So to build a quad the same money as a wizard, I mean a wizard is a hundred and like two hundred bucks with the transmitter. So knock off like forty fifty bucks for the transmitter. So can you build a quad for hundred fifty bucks? Yeah. Is it good? It's better than a wizard, and you'll know how to build it. Casey Hall says, I've been working on troubleshooting all day. I can arm the controller has no connection to the drone. I can't arm. The controller has no connection to the drone other than the green light saying it's bound and vibrating when I turn them on. So the fact that your receiver is bound to your transmitter, that's a good thing. But your receiver now has to be connected to and configured to your flight controller. And the problem is that there are so many flight controllers that there's no... Uh, getting the receiver working is the single hardest thing that people struggle with the exact instructions depend on your flight controller casey hall if you want to email me i'll do my best to help you out you got to tell me what flight controller and receiver you're using and hopefully we can get it you know pretty solid brandon clark wants to know is the eris c250 any good the eris c250 is not bad eris makes actually some pretty half decent middling quality where is it there it is some pretty half decent middling quality ready to flies look at that now this this is not terrible. Mm, actually, this isn't the one. I, I don't actually know this one. But I, I, Eris has some pretty decent... Oh, I don't love that. Look at that. That's going to get slammed in and the battery and broken. I don't know if I would go with the C250 exactly. But in general, Eris... And see, look, it's almost 300 bucks. In general, Eris, this is the X220. That's the one I've recommended in the past is the Eris X220. Comes with a, you can get it with a uh, QX7 transmitter. Pretty solid for the money. place it here bought the tyro 109 but then got deployed before he could build it that's why he's buying a ready to fly <laughs> sorry dude you know that's how it that's how it goes right you signed up you knew what you were getting into you can fly quads over there right i don't know let's see here Hawk 5 is definitely – see that? Yeah. The Hawk 5 is an amazing ready to fly. Like just straight up great. No no question. But look at the price. Hawk 5, well, Amazon's not the place to go. Hang on. Get it on – where is it? Banggood. 250 bucks. So 250 bucks just for the quad, right? So that's the price point 
for like an amazing ready to fly. Okay. Or bind and fly rather. It's a higher price point. Aldo Gonch, thank you for five bucks. Adrian Bravo, thanks for two bucks. Uh, can I build a good quad the same as a wizard? That's uh, We answered that one. What else we got? No, no, no. IV says, here's the thing. You build, buy an Eris X220, then you're stuck with Radio Link, and all you can buy is Eris. No, that's not true. The Eris X220 can be purchased. I know because I have it on my website. I know it can be purchased with uh, a QX7. So here is, oh, wow. That's a FlySky receiver. Hang on. X220. Ready to fly. Um, here you go. Boom. 349 comes with a QX7. This is a hell of a deal. In fact, um, see, look, what are we talking about? We're talking about products. That's what y'all want to hear about. If we look right here on my FPV Know-It-All, Ultimate FPV Shopping List is my website with all my, my main product recommendations here in the Ready to Fly section. I have links right here where you can purchase it with the QX7 radio. I'll put that right in the chat. That is an affiliate link in case you're wondering. And that's what I would recommend. It's a little more expensive than the radio link, but the QX7 is just going to be compatible with everything. Let's see here. What do you got here, Judy Jacob? Hanging your quads from the ceiling. I did something new tonight. I flew my Marmot on HQ five and a half inch props. Never flew five and a half before because none of my frames could take them. But the Marmot is actually big enough to take a five and a half inch prop. It was a very, very interesting experience. I'll tell you the biggest thing that I noticed about these five and a half inch props is when you do a big dive and you're going to like do a gap at the end of the dive, you're going to go under a tree or something. There's that moment where you're wah, falling out of the sky and you got to hit the throttle and go through the gap. And you what what often happens is you get on the throttle too late and you just go into the ground. With those five and a half inch props, and this is always true of bigger props, but I kind of forgot it. You get a little more responsiveness down low. Like it's a little more sort of grunty down low. I felt like I had a lot more sort of control down low with those five and a half inch props. Um, they're a little bit less top end, but I was doing these big power loops and then going through tiny gaps at the end, and I just felt like I had so much control. So, check out those. Uh, check out those five and a half inch. These were HQ five point five by three point ones, but there's a bunch of people making. Gemfan makes some five and a half inch props, and if your frame can take them, they're actually are, are worth a look. Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> Jared Tiki give, uh, gives two bucks. Thank you for two bucks, Jared, and asks best three hundred dollar FPV goggle. Check my channel, Jared. I just did a video about that. So, thanks for your donation. Quadbot says five and a half inch are like flying five inch with lag. Yeah, no, you're not wrong there, Quadbot. I was flying them on twenty two oh eight motors. They were 2208, 2300 kV, if you can believe that. Um, and uh, I think the 228 motors, the torque of those, I didn't notice any prop lag. Like they were totally responsive, just with a little more control down low. But maybe that's because I was flying 2208s and they had a lot of torque. Slav Sir wants to know how long I have flight controllers or other bits randomly fry. Not that often. It's usually ESCs that fry on me. Um, I mean, just ESCs are always kind of a crapshoot. Um, flight controllers I have pretty good luck with, though. I seldom fry a flight controller. I don't know why. Pardon me, guys. I got a little bit of a... I don't know why, but I got a little bit of congestion right now. So I'm just going to keep sniffing into the mic. You're welcome. <laughs> I just grossed out some people here. <laughs> I apologize. If I, say, I don't know why it just happened enough. 
What props do I recommend for F80 2500KV? Josh L, when I released my 2407 motor, I was shooting for a, pardon me, sorry about that. I was shooting for a motor similar to the EFAW 2407, and I didn't exactly hit that mark. Uh, I think because we used a, a hotter magnet than the EFAW uses. I'm not sure about that. I actually ended up with a motor that's very, very similar in performance to the F80. When Mini Quad Test Bench did their bench tests on my motor and I compared it to the F80, I, I had two I was of two minds. On the one hand, I was like, well, I mean if I if I made a motor that performs very similar to an F80, that's good. I mean the F80 is a great motor. But the F80 is kind of a hot motor. It's a powerful motor. And I, and the EFA 2407 was for a big motor, it was surprisingly sort of easy on the battery. My motor was a little bit hotter than, than a little closer to an F80. Um, but I, I'm happy to say, Josh L., I can recommend props for the F80 all day long because I fly my motors, the 2407, the JB2407 motor uh, from Lumineer. And the, the prop that works the best for me is the Gemfan 5149.9. Now, here's the thing. When I first built my Chameleon with my JB2407 motors, I thought that it cornered a little bit, a little poorly. It was a little mushy in the corners, and I think that's because of its weight. And I ended up going up to the 51499 prop, and that actually really worked well for it. It was a really good combo with a little bit of a heavier freestyle quad and a big motor. You definitely need a, a healthy battery to deal with that because the 51499 is fairly pitchy and it's a little hard. On, I got I got two and a half, three minute flight time, which is, you know, if I'm flying a, a more efficient lighter rig, I might get three and a half minutes flight time. So it, it wasn't that much shorter flight time, but definitely the sag was noticeable. When I used older batteries and I would punch the throttle and they just sagged to 3.6 and I'd be like, oh, this is bad. So... I, I suggest you check out the 51499, the Gem Fan Hurricane 51499 for your F80s, but definitely do it on a healthy battery. Yeah, the EFAs are fantastic motors, Snoopy RC. Uh, you, you can't over prop those motors, they just love big props. So I found that the EFAs on like a 5050 HQ were just really good. RD, would I recommend the Jumper T16 over a Tyrannus QX7? Um, yeah, a base QX7, the Jumper T16, I think I would take it. It's going to be more expensive. The QX7 is about 100 bucks RD, whereas the T16 is more like 160 bucks. <laughs> Shut up, MC's Creations. MC's Creations says, well, I guess you should have got the V8 Mustang then. <sighs> I, got the, I got the turbocharged Mustang. I got the turbocharged Mustang. <laughs> it's a good Mustang. You shut up. Buddy7798 in the Super Chats. Thank you for two bucks, buddy. Wants to know, what do you think of the Baby Hawk 3-inch? The base Baby Hawk 3-inch was a good quad car. It was a great 3-inch. Um, the Baby Hawk Pro, the Baby Hawk R Pro had problems. Had reliability problems. The VTX broke. The gyro issues. Maybe they fixed it, but I wasn't a fan of the Pro. The base Baby Hawk three inch. The problem is that it is, it is missing features like like a smart audio. Although perhaps they've added it. I don't think so. I think they put that stuff in the Pro. The Pro had a really good feature set, but I, I had problems with it. So today, I think you can probably like. What does a Baby Hawk three inch go for? What does it go for? 145 so for 140 bucks you can get the diatone 349 and you should just do that instead yeah get the diet don't buy the baby hawk get the diatone 349 sorry emacs sorry emacs i have something from emacs that's under embargo that i've really enjoyed and uh i can't tell you about it because it's under embargo but i'll say this it's not a three inch so it doesn't matter. The 349 is still a great quad if you're looking for a 3-inch. I want to that reminds me. I want to show you guys. I want to remind you guys about something. 
no, 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 no. Sorry, guys. I gotta, I gotta search for this. There we go. No. Well, if I can't find it, I can't show it to. There it is. I found it. I gotta, I gotta save this, guys. I want to show you. I want to remind you guys that this exists. I mentioned this on a previous live stream. This is a th project. They finally gave the project a name. The project is called Emu Flight. And what this is, is you remember, you remember Helio Spring? RIP Helio Spring. And they made the Helio Flight Controller, which many people loved. And one of the things that was distinctive about the Helio Flight Controller was that it had a coprocessor for running the filtering code. And it had this special filtering code called IMUF, and it had proprietary stuff in it. Well, Helio went out of business, and the Helio Spring Flight Controller is not really being made anymore. So, this guy has put the IM. But the, what they did when they went out of business was they open sourced the code. Pardon me, guys. Hold on one second. I didn't think you wanted to hear that. So they open sourced the code, and this guy has put the IMUF filtering into a regular beta flight target or butterfly target, which means you can go and check out this repo. If you're a brave soul, you can check out this repo, and you can download. Where's the releases? Where's releases? Here it is. You can download the hex file. Look right here. Pick your flight controller, download the hex file, and you can try out the old Heliospring IMUF filtering without having a Heliospring board. This is very, very exciting. Oh, my bad. This right here. I didn't switch scenes, sorry. This right here. Here's the hexes. Just pick your flight controller, download this, and flash it. This is very, very exciting because... Many people like liked the Helio filtering, but maybe you didn't want to use the Helio hardware. Well, now – and then when Helio went out of business, they were like, well, I guess that's it for IMUF. What are we going to do? This is what you can do. You can run the IMUF filtering on any flight controller now. Very exciting. Joshua Owen, thank you for five bucks. You asked – um, how is the stock tune on the Diatone GTR 369? Joshua, I did a couple flights on it. I wasn't, I didn't hate it, but having seen uh, UAV Futures call me out and say that Andy RC is a better tuner than me, now I'm inspired to go tune the tune it within an inch of its life and make it fly as good as I can. So, uh, I I like it. Uh, UAV Futures is super super impressed with Andy RC's tune of the Diatone GT 369. So I guess you should check his out. Prop suggestion, the Avon 3-inch prop is an amazing 3-inch prop. I, it's hard to imagine anything better. MC's Creations, thanks for 5 bucks. When are you going to build a 7-inch quad? I reviewed a 7-inch quad, but I don't know when I'm going to build it. I don't know about that. Bottled in the Discord says, you keep promoting the QX7. What about having to mod it to use Crossfire? Yes, you still have to mod it to use Crossfire. So if you're using Crossfire, the QX7 is an annoying choice. That is true. I assume a beginner who's buying the QX7 is not going to be doing Crossfire. Von Zeck asks, any word of the new Fat Shark flagship? Nope, haven't heard anything. Um, and if I had heard anything, I would say I can't answer that because I'm under NDA. So the fact that I'm telling you, nope, haven't heard anything, means that you know I haven't heard anything. New Fat Shark flagship goggles. There's There are rumors... There are suppositions, there are guesses that since Orca is releasing a high-end goggle that Fat Shark might go, hmm, we can do that too, and release a high-end goggle. It would be very exciting if it was true. DJ Pop wants to know in the Discord, is it worth it to build a 3-inch from scratch? I always find I have the same price if I would build it myself or bought Bind and Fly. DJ Pop, I kind of agree with you. If you look at something like the Diatone GT349, you could build that from scratch, but you're not going to save much money, and the build is going to be a real hassle. The nice thing about quads like the 349 is that it's 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 not like – like look at things like the Beta, beta FPV, uh, the Beta 75. 
Like that thing is basically just a board with motors. And if anything on it breaks, getting getting spares is hard. It's not really like you're going to buy something and solder it on. But if you look at something like the GT349, you can get a flight controller if you need a spare flight controller, spare VTX. There's even a version of the 349 that comes with a TBS Unify, which how cool is that? And I like the fact that at the 3-inch size, you can get relatively standard parts that you can just replace if you need to. So I agree. I'm not convinced it's worth building micros. You don't save much. I mean, eventually you have to repair them, and then you're going to rebuild them anyway. But I, with 5 inches, you you can save a lot of money by building yourself. But with, with micros, you practically do the same by just buying it ready to fly. Let's see. Bottle, if you have a QX7, you, you don't have to buy a new radio. You can do the inverter mod. I mean, or you can reduce the baud rate. You can do it. You, it's okay. I on FPV in the, in the YouTube chat asks, would people pay for me to build them quads? Here's the thing, I on FPV. The problem is that you're competing against Chinese labor. So if you look at something like the Holy Bro Copus, if you add up the cost of parts and then add in the cost of labor, you can't compete with that because you're buying parts at retail and they're buying them at wholesale. So for the cost, you just can't compete with that. So if you're try, there are companies like um, Indestructible Quads is one. I don't, I don't know if he's even still in business. I assume he is, but I don't know. Um, Indestructible Quads builds quads at at home and sells them. And he said, when I, when I interviewed him, he said, basically, he has to build them in under two hours in order to make any money. He has a markup of basically like 50 bucks, 40, 50 bucks. And when I think about that, I'm like, F you. <laughs> First of all, I can't build a quad in two hours. Sorry, I can't do it. It takes me three, four hours to build a quad. And I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> So if you're going to build quads for people, here's what you you need to either just love building. There's people out there who go, I just love building. I'll just build your quad for free. Okay, give me 50 bucks. I don't care. If you're that guy, go for it. And the problem is if you actually want to make a business of it, it's very, very hard to compete with Chinese labor um, or your prices just have to be way higher. And then the other thing is you build somebody's quad and then it has a problem and now you're in the customer support business and personally – so yes, people will pay you to do it, but wow, it's there's a lot of little, little a lot of little pitfalls. Quadbot FPV in the chat asks. Oh, by the way, somebody asked, hey, how do you get a, how do you get Discord invite? You get a Discord invite by joining my Patreon. The Discord is exclusive to patrons only. The reason for that is like I don't know. I first of all, I really mistreat my patrons. There are almost no patron exclusive benefits. I just I've I've never wanted to create a like a tier of like these people are better. So I always go out of my way. Sometimes in fact I intentionally I'm I'm embarrassed to say, sometimes I intentionally ignore the patrons because I'm just like I don't want anybody to think I'm like I don't know. But I mean they do pay oh, they pay me money, so I should pay attention to them. And I usually so one of the exclusive benefits of being a patron is that you get access to my Discord server. Um you get access to that's not even true anymore. I do giveaway I shouldn't say this. I do giveaways on my Patreon, but it turns out in the United States it is against the law to charge for access to a giveaway. So that's why whenever there's like a giveaway, they'll say you can get an entry by buying our product, but you can mail in. You can mail in an entry and get it for free. If you pay, if you're charging for access to a giveaway, it's actually like a lottery and that's heavily regulated. So I used to do giveaways just for my patrons, but Patreon came to me. They they messaged a bunch of creators and said, "Listen, this is not actually legal." Because in order to get access to the giveaways, people have to join your Patreon and they have to give you money. So they said you have to open up the giveaways to the public. So now when I post a giveaway on my Patreon page, it's actually a public post. And anyone could join in and enter. Not just patrons. But mostly patrons see it. So anyway. So I do giveaways. And um, what else do I do for my patrons? The Discord server, the giveaways.
Is that it? Oh, yeah. Podcasts. I put these live streams up on the Patreon page as podcasts and only patrons get access to them. So that's how you get to the Discord server, though. All right. Anyway. What's the link for the repo? I'll give you that link again. It's Emu Flight. Emu Flight. This is the he Butterfly repo with the Helio IMUF filters built in. Quadbot FPV asks, if you don't do snap rolls and flips, how do you really tune a quad? Good question, Quadbot. Many times people will, a beginner will send me a video of him flying and say, hey, what, what do you think of my tune? And it's like, he's like in a field and he's going, and I'm like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, your, tune, your tune is fine. If you're not really, if you're not really pushing the quad, you don't really find the limits of the tune. And I, what I say to those people is, you should learn, just practice being a better pilot, and eventually you will come to the limits of the tune, and then you'll go, ah, now I need to learn to tune. But if you don't fly aggressively, you never find the limits of the tune, and the tune doesn't really matter. So quad bot FPV, if you don't do snap rolls and flips, how do you tune a quad? Well, if you don't do you have to think about what you're trying to get the quad to do. Like, let's think about a camera platform. A camera platform, you would want it to be really, really stable in the air, and you wouldn't want it to, like, move around too much. So a camera platform, you want like, want an ultra-high eye gain. But if, if the question, what I should say to you is, fly the quad. If you're happy with how the quad is flying... That, then don't mess with the tune. You don't need to tune it. Um, it's like it's like if you have a if you have a car and you say, "What's the stopping distance of this car? Do I need anti lock braking? Do I need new tires?" And it's like if you're a little old lady who drives to church every Sunday at thirty miles an hour, who cares? Who cares what kind of tires you got on it? You're not you're not finding the limits of the equipment there. So, quad butt FPV. If you don't do snaps, flips, and rolls. You don't need to tune the quad to do good snap flips and rolls. You don't do those. Th there's a little bit more to it than that. Like a quad that has got really low latency and really nicely tuned P gain and feed forward is going to feel so connected and sharp. And you might not know what you're missing if you've never flown one of those. You might be flying a quad like it's really slushy and you're like, yeah, okay, I'm kind of okay with it. And then you fly a really well-tuned quad and you're like, oh, this is better. But if you don't do flips and rolls, then you don't need to tune for flips and rolls. Anyway, yeah. Let's see. William22 says... I followed your word and got the HDO rapid fire instead of the V4. Is best decision of my life. It's so good. I'm going to tell you guys a story, and you're going to think I'm I'm shilling for Fat Shark here, but it's just a true story. Uh, we had a race at my house this weekend, and there was a guy there, and he said, "I can't. I'm thinking about buying goggles. I can't decide." Did I tell this story on yesterday's live stream? I'm getting old. I'm forgetting which stories I've already told. He said, I'm buying goggles. I can't decide which goggles to buy. I went in the house and I got a bunch of, I have an, a commander, an attitude, an EV200. And I let him, he said, I'm coming from box goggles. So I thought, well, I'll let him look at the EV200D first because it has a big field of view. And he looked at it and he was like, oh, okay. And then he looked at the sky zone and he was like, oh, the sky zone looks really nice. And the sky zone does look better than the EV200D, but it is smaller. So he's like, yeah, I think I like the, I would take the sky zone over the av 200 d he said. I like the quality of the image better than the size of the image. And then I let him look at the Fat Shark attitudes and he went, he was, he was like, whoa, okay, I'm sold. And I'm always surprised to hear that because like the, the OLED screen on the attitudes, it does look better, but like, is it that much better? Well, he thought it was. So you never know. You never know. The HDOs have a very nice looking screen. It's true. We got some super chats coming in. Let me make sure I get these out of the way. MC's Creations, thank you for five hey eyes. I don't know when I'm going to build a seven inch quad. Um, I got to tell you, I people are. I really think I would do better to get into micros than into seven inches. If I'm going to go a new direction, I should go. I should go with micros. 
Is it worth switching to Butterflight for the IMUF code? Asks Gyre Builder. Thank you for five bucks, Gyre Builder. Gyre Builder. What are the differences between Butterflight and Betaflight? Butterflight is based on Betaflight. It's forked from Betaflight, but it just has custom filtering and stuff. Is it worth switching to Butterflight for the IMUF code? We don't know. I hear that UAV Tech is working on some videos about it. I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, we don't know. It's worth a try. Here's what I would say. If you're flying Betaflight, what is it based on? It's based on three Butterflight 367. Is it based on 4.0? Is it based on Betaflight 4.0? I'm not sure how I would know how to tell that. Because if you're flying Betaflight 4.0 and you're having problems with Jello and mid-throttle oscillations and hot motors, maybe give this a try. Yeah. Siati says, I've got my, I've got his number. Siati, I got to go to Atlanta and fly with Siati sometime. Get, get some micro content. Emu, UAV Tech says, Emu Flight is rebasing on 40X. So UAV Tech, does that mean they have not currently rebased on 40X? Yeah. Let's see. Spectro, thank you for five bucks. Building a, why is my ringer on during a live stream? Where's my phone anyway? Who's calling me? It's a prank call, I guarantee. Oh, no, it's a Tennessee number. Well, I'm not going to take that call, and I'm not sure when my ringer's on. My ringer's not on. Oh, no. My delivery driver is on the way. That's bad. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Well, apparently someone's ordered me a pizza. Thinks it's a complete waste of everyone's time for you to order me a pizza. It's a complete waste of every time. And... Uh, now we just sit here while I tell him... Sorry, guys. So we, um, <laughs> yeah, we went to the pizza restaurants around us and said, if it's not one of us, don't take the order because people try to prank me by sending me pizzas during the live stream. Um, but apparently these guys didn't get the message, so... I guess he has my number, though. Yeah, so we told him if they don't have my number, don't accept the order. But apparently someone has my phone number, so thanks for that. Um, you've wasted everyone time. Congratulations. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what you're hoping to accomplish. You haven't inconvenienced me in the slightest. You have annoyed a random pizza delivery driver who no one knows. What's the point of order? I mean, if here's the thing. If you order me a bad pizza and then it comes to the door and then I ha I'm like, oh, a pizza. And then I pay 40 bucks for a pizza that's that's got some weird toppings on it. Ha ha, big joke, everybody. But like literally, I don't know. So congratulations. Uh, anyway, back to the stream. Back to the stream. Um, any word on if the Rotorite folks are making it to the West Coast Throwdown in August? Thank you, Blandon Ray, for five bucks. Yes, the Rotorite folks are making it to the West Coast Throwdown in August. Um, I I shouldn't say that. I, I know that we're planning on making it. I'm pretty sure that Drew and me are coming for Saturday and Sunday. We have a commitment the week before. We should fly out Friday night. That's the current plan. And last I heard, Corey wants to go to the whole thing and asked if Rotor Riot would pay his airfare. So I think that that is all happening, but I shouldn't. If it turns out not to happen, then I shouldn't have spilled the beans. So, okay. 
Rob Milan, thank you for 10 bucks. He left a message on Messenger. Okay, I'll get you on Messenger, Rob. Thank you for your donation. Prism Warp, thanks for five bucks. Brian, thanks for 20 Canadian dollars. Would love to see a toothpick build in a JB tune. I do have a toothpick from, uh, who sent me the toothpick? Mm, Happy Model, I think. Happy Model sent me their toothpick to review, but I haven't done a build yet. What's my opinion of the Mamba Stack Mark II? I like the Diatone Mamba Stack. It's pretty solid electronics. And in fact, Diatone has a flight controller and ESC stack for like 45 bucks, which if it were anybody but Diatone, I'd be like, oh, that's got to be shitty. Sorry. Hang on, guys. I'm sorry. So, anyway. Uh, what was I saying? Totally derailed by this pizza delivery. <clears throat> yeah, I know who it is, too. I know who's ordering the pizzas. There are some people out there who have an axe to grind. And I think I'm ruining the hobby. I don't know why. They think Rotor Riot's ruining the hobby. And the way that they express their dissatisfaction is by sending me yucky pizzas. <laughs> I'm not going to say who because it would just uh, would just gratify them. Every minute that I spend talking about or thinking about them is uh, is a payoff for them. So let's, let's not worry about it. Okay. I unfortunately I apologize you guys for the dead time on the stream, but literally this guy is outside my house, my gate. Uh, he didn't even get to the front door, guys. He didn't even get to the front door. I have a gate. So he's sitting at the gate. You've just – all you've done by sending me a pizza is inconvenience some poor delivery driver who just had to go do a delivery and didn't get it paid and didn't get a tip. That's all you've done. Congratulations. You're the asshole. You haven't inconvenienced me. I didn't even get out of my chair. I'm just – I'm perfectly comfortable here. Oh. Go ahead. Send me more pizzas. It's all good. Ooh, that's comfortable. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, Tyler Properwell, for two bucks. How do they? Yeah, the only thing is, where do they get? My, I mean, my I, my address is fairly well known, but I don't give out my phone number very much. So, but um, you know, my phone number is not really a secret either. Here's the thing: I just rely on most people not being dickholes. I people are like, your address is out there. And I'm like, but most people are just decent people who aren't going to be assholes. But then you get one asshole in. What are you going to do? Let's see here. Too Fast for You in the Discord asks, when building a new quad, do you automatically use conformal coding on your electronics? I do not. I should. Sometimes I do. It is good to use conformal, especially on like the ESCs, which are on the arms. It is good to use it. I don't do it every single freaking time. But if you did it every time, it'd be a good, it'd be good. Chamber says, that's it. I'm coming over to eat pizza. I'll be by after, by after the live stream. That's the thing, Chamber. The first time somebody prank called me a pizza, we were just like, yeah, okay, here's 40 bucks. We'll buy the pizza, whatever. And we'll eat, yeah, I'll eat a pizza. If you're going to prank call somebody pizza, Here's the way – see, the best the best pranks are pranks where everybody kind of laughs at the end, right? So if you're going to prank call somebody a pizza, send them a decent pizza. Then they're like, ha-ha, you know, I had to spend 40 bucks on a pizza that I wasn't planning on spending, but hey, at least I got a pizza. But no, 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 the pizza prank callers are smarter than that. They make it like an olive and pineapple and they just make it a disgusting pizza that no one would want to eat. So it's just like, okay, well – just send the driver home. Anyway. Oh, oh, well, here's another one. Uh, I'm 
Okay. How many of these am I going to get? Uh, we'll see. <sighs> okay. Moving on. There's two. They ordered two pizzas. We're going to need to leave a sign out at the gate. Dear pizza delivery drivers, you have been pranked. We didn't order pizza. Sorry. Yeah, another. <laughs> the, no, no, no. Scooter FPV, it's not all good. Scooter FPV says in the chat the drivers get to take home the pizza and they eat. No, I used to work at a pizza restaurant. When a delivery went out and came back, that was the best day of the the best because then you can't you can't sell it so then the the staff gets to eat it right but they the the orderers of the the prank pizzas they're onto that so they send you a like a, a really crap it's like anchovy olive pineapple and barbecue sauce they send you this really crappy pizza that no one would want so no one is happy about this i don't care it hasn't cost me any money and uh it's just inconvenienced a poor delivery driver. So. There you go. <laughs> Cotees says, send it my way. Okay, you are, you're nasty, Cotees. <laughs> yeah, two different pizza restaurants. So, there you go. Well, Josh Dandoy, I don't want to turn my phone off because this poor guy is outside at my gate. And it actually is a, my gate has a gate opener. And in the it doesn't latch; it just has a gate opener. And so, if the deliver we've had delivery drivers be like, "All right, well, fuck it, I'm just going through the gate." Uh, sorry, I said sorry, parents. I said the f word on stream. Uh, and then they just push through the gate and they mess it up. So it's like I don't. I want to tell the poor driver that he should just go home. It's unfortunate. <laughs> I like pineapple on pizza. I just don't like pineapple and anchovy and olives. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, let's do some more Q&A, please. Let's do some more Q&A. <laughs> That's fine. Frank Barajas, honestly, I'm fine with just putting myself on a no delivery list. I'm fine. I don't really care. I don't really care. Whatever. We'll just go get pizza. <laughs> who, is a, who is a pretentious? Who's pretentious? Tony Long. Who's pretentious? Tony Long says, I can't stand him. He's so pretentious. Sorry, Aldo Gosh. Yeah, enough pizza. It's, it's, the only thing is that the, the drivers are texting me saying, please come get your pizza, and I just feel like it's disrespectful to ignore them. It's not their fault. I got a defective rapid-fire module, says William22, and right-hand instead of left-hand in my package. William22, the place to get support for Immersion RC products and rapid-fire specifically is the Immersion RC Hub Facebook group. That's where you need to go. To stroke me FPV, Steel is, Steel is misunderstood. I think he's misunderstood. He has a vibe that a lot of people read as stuck up. I don't know Steel super well. So take this with a grain of salt. But when I first met him, I also thought he was kind of stuck up and standoffish. But I think he actually is just a little introverted and awkward. And that reads as stuck up and standoffish. Once you actually get in a conversation with him, he's, su he's super cool. I will say that sometimes... I th like if you look at look at the videos he did with Drew Camden where they did the the tour of Europe. He was so annoyed during that trip and you can see it in every video. So like I think he has less ability to hide his annoyance than than some people. When he's annoyed, he'll just be like annoyed. And and I think he's a little introverted, but I don't think he's actually like rude or mean. I think he's actually a pretty nice guy. I just think he's... I think Steele is actually not great at being a celebrity. Because he doesn't... I think he's a little bit of more of a private person and doesn't want people, like, messing with him. That's my read on it. It's too bad that he actually makes his living being a celebrity of some sort. Anyway. Do I need caps on my VBAT and ESCs? Caps are not mandatory for 4S, wrong way FPV. They do help clean up video. And for 6S, they are a very, very good idea. 
Mario Lepo, thank you for 20 Norwegian kroners. I also would eat olive pizza. I do like olives on pizza, but green olive and pe pe uh, pineapple is a noxious combination. It's a noxious combination. Oh my God, it's still happening, guys. <sighs> right, he's not getting my responses. He's not getting my responses. Hang on, guys. Fucking hell. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. <laughs> Do you think uh, Steel makes more money off ethics, battery straps, and props or the quad? I think he makes more money off the quad. <laughs> he is cool in real life. He is cool. He is. He is. And he's a good pilot. He's a good pilot. Anyway. Ninja Lizards wants to know what my favorite 4S battery is. Thanks for everything. Private Island FPV, thank you for five Canadian dollars. Um, I got to tell you guys, um, the one that I end up flying these days is the Race Day Quads one, um, just because it's convenient to order. It is a good performer. I think that the... Um... No, no. Oh, my God. It's still happening, guys. This whole live stream is just going to be me. Okay. I'm sorry. I gotta. I gotta send my wife down to the gate because I gotta stream. We need a sign. Um, I use the the CNHL. If you get them on sale, can, are really good performers for a little bit cheaper. Um, I'm not a fan of the of the. Uh, the super expensive premium batteries. Um, they do perform well, but I think you get good performing batteries for cheaper. <laughs> yeah, Snapback FPV says, I love the Race Day Quads batteries, but I've had three of the 6S ones get a dead cell off less than 10 charges. That is, I did notice some imbalance in the 6S batteries uh, when I used them. I do agree with that. Yeah. Thoughts on the Attitude V5, Patrick Hannon? I did review the Attitude V5, so I would say my thoughts are, are right there. Yeah. Will you ever switch over to the HDOs? I personally love my HD3s, and I like the field of view. Slider Z33 FPV, I think I will switch to the HDOs someday just because eventually my HD3s will die, and they, they won't be. I do like the bigger field of view. The HDOs look great, and I got to tell you, I got to tell you guys, I was testing a a high definition system using the HDMI input and I tested it on the HDOs because for whatever reason it wasn't working on the HDMI input of my HD3s and the HDOs like when you look at the when you look at an analog feed in the HDOs I'm like yeah it looks it looks okay it looks pretty good pardon me but when I looked at this HDMI high def feed in the HDOs I was like whoa if you have the chance to use a high def on those, they really the screen really shows how how much better it looks. Um, for now, I'm happy with the larger field of view on the HD threes, um, but uh, but the HDOs, I'm sure eventually I'll switch because eventually my HD threes will die. DJ Pop says you Americans are so lucky you have those cheap batteries here in Europe. We have to buy batteries for like twenty three euros. DJ Pop, Europeans can buy from CNHL online too, right? CNHL, it's a it's the international website. So they uh they uh you can buy it the same same as us, I think. <clears throat> yeah. Kyle Hansen says, when people say hot motors, how hot is hot? Um, here's what I would say, Kyle Hansen. If you pinch the motor and it's painful, that's too hot. 
if you pinch the motor and it's uncomfortable, but you can keep pinching it, that's warm. Um, if you are like a, a miner with giant calluses on your fingers, obviously you need to calibrate. Like think about like a hot cup of coffee or a or or something right out of the microwave where you pick it up and you go ooh 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 ooh, but you can just hold it. Your motor shouldn't be hotter than that. Okay, that's what I would say. Alex Goresh says, "What do you mean high def video? I mean there's a video system. It's um." There's a video system is uh, this is the one I was specifically testing. It's the R2 tech. Nope, that's not the one. My bad. They make more than one. I'm sorry. Uh, what is it? Wow. Um, apparently. Oh. Wow. Whoever is, whoever is, they are committed. They are committed. I got to admit, I'm impressed. Now a taxi is coming. Whoever is doing this is super committed. Is super committed to sending people to my house. I'm impressed. Well done, guys. Well done. Uh, <clears throat> um, <laughs> thank you. Someone's PayPaling. Someone's PayPaling me money for uh for pizza. It's nice of whoever did it to put my actual phone number in so that I can know that these things are coming. Um, my address didn't get leaked, little crypto. My address is public information. Um, okay. Yeah, I've got my okay. I've got my I've got my wife upstairs handling it, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my phone off, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll be able to finish the live stream now. So that's what's too hot of a motor is. Uh, the enamel on the motors is good up to like 200 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Maybe Celsius, not Celsius, that's really hot. So it's good up to 200, maybe Celsius. It's good up to hotter than you think, but the thing to keep in mind is that the motor bell itself is cooler than the internal windings. So uh, oh, it's the Next G1. This is the system I was testing. It's the R2 Tech Next G1. Um, this is the one I was testing and it uses HDMI output to go into your goggles. And, uh, I have to say, uh, I did not get to fly it on the bench. The latency looked good, but when I went to fly it, as soon as I armed the quad, the picture froze up and it stopped working. And then after a while, the VTX broke and stopped working. So, so that is not the R2 Tech Next G1 so far is not the holy grail of high def video. So, yeah, um, the latency seemed good on the bench. I never did get to fly it. Can you run a Crossfire Micro TX on a 1S LiPo? That's an interesting question. Crossfire Micro TX. I think it needs 2S, doesn't it? The transmitter needs 2S, not 1S. Yeah. Thank you, Do4FPV. Do4FPV says, hey, I called and told Domino's not to deliver to you tonight. Thank you, Do4FPV. <laughs> so if the HDOs are on your list, what do you think the Orcas will end up doing? Asks Sliders D33 FPV. No, you're right, Sliders. You asked if I ever was going to get Orca or get HD3s, and I was like, well, compared to my – or sorry – you asked if I was ever going to get HDOs, and I thought, well, compared to my HD3s, yeah, I probably will get them. Um, but I might get Orcas. The thing about Orcas is that I think Orcas look amazing. Um, I'm not thrilled with the big blocky form factor, although they, I hear they've gotten smaller, so maybe that'll be fixed. Um, the question is when Orca is going to have a commercial product that you can buy. So the Kickstarter deliveries are supposed to start in August or September, and... They're gonna. That's just the first round of Kickstarters. When are they gonna have like a thousand of them that they can ship to to retailers? Um, if if Orca sent me one of the first Kickstarter goggles, I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> they looked amazing. I just am looking forward to seeing what the final product is really like. 
Martin Tiger says a ceramic capacitor fell off my 4-in-1 ESC. Is it still safe to fly? Probably, Martin. If, if you lose one capacitor, usually uh, then you can get away with it. Um, just don't fly over water and see if it, see if it death rolls. Uh, Ron Grant, thank you for five bucks in the super chat. Is a fully charged lipo versus a used lipo more volatile when punctured? Yes, definitely. Now, a, a discharged lipo at like 3.0 or 3.2 volts is almost completely inert. It's just not going to do much when you puncture it. The higher the voltage of the lipo, the more uh, dramatic it will be, the more energy it will release when it is damaged so uh but even a lipo at storage can pop off so don't assume that just because your lipos are at storage that they're safe you know uh but if they're fully charged yes they definitely will will be worse alex goresh says i have a friend that argues with me that a mavic is better than my mr seal quad what can i tell him to shut him up well here's the thing alex the mavic is a way better camera platform than your mr steel quad you want to do real estate photography? You want to go up to 400 feet and take a video of an area? The Mavic is the thing to get. It's just each, you know, each tool to its job. Each tool to its job. Let's see here. DJ Pop points out it's a really big hassle to ship batteries to Europe and you pay 20% duty. DJ Pop, I thought that if you ordered from like Banggood or CNHL or Asia that you kind of got around that stuff. I don't know. Maybe not. Broke Mechanic asks, I've got a new build running 2205, 2500 kV motors. It's sucking battery down too quickly. Still maybe 45 second flight time? Holy crap. Broke Mechanic. Uh, that's weird. Because 2205, uh, uh, 50, 40 props on 2205 just should not pull a ton of amps. That's really weird, Broke Mechanic. I mean, my first guess would be that your batteries are old, but presumably you have other quadcopters and the batteries are performing fine on them. So I don't know about that. What could cause them to pull so much amps? That's really weird. Maybe you're... What, are you sure that your voltage meter is correct? Are you seeing the batteries sag from full to empty? Um, do the batteries rebound after you get off the throttle? That's the thing I would be looking at, Broke Mechanics. So the, the battery starts and the OSD reads 4.2, and then you hit the throttle and zoop, it sags, right? Uh, so, yeah. Is that, or does it, like, is it reading wrong? Does it come back? Thank you, Vladimir Kovalenko, for 99 cents. Let's see here. Try shaking your light bulb before flying. That's an old April Fool's prank. That's another. You see, here's the best pranks are pranks where at the end both people are laughing. That's what I tell my eight year old son. Some adults out there still haven't gotten the message. A prank where one person is pissed and the other person's laughing. That's not a prank. You're just an asshole. Um, the lipo shaking prank. It was a really good prank. Uh, April Fools several years ago, Rotor Riot released a video about shaking your lipo before flying. Uh, said it makes it last longer and final glide was in the video and he had a lipo he took the lipo in his hand and he said that before you fly you have to shake it you have to shake the lipo just shake it really good you see where he was going with that and he said if you don't believe me ask bardwell and to this day to this day final glide to this day people ask me about that you son of a bitch <laughs> And I, people were like, hey, is this shaking lipos thing for real? And I was like, no, it's not for real. You guys, are you, how dumb? No, but, you know, they don't know. And I, I came to have a sense of humor about it. That's a harmless prank. It was a good prank. That's a good prank. <laughs> but it's not real. It's just a prank. <laughs> Noisy B says, if I slightly burned my motor and it changed color darker, is it safe to fly? Probably not, my friend. By the time your windings are discolored, your motor is probably permanently damaged. Even if it flies, I would be suspicious that when you push it hard, it's going to drop out of the sky. So, yeah. 
Joseph Bourne, is there any advantage to using the throttle scale in beta flight versus a curve on the Tyrannus? Um, the throttle scale in beta flight, I think that's a tough one. The thing about using a throttle curve on the Tyrannus is that I have mine set up this way. I flip a switch to activate the throttle curve, and then I turn a potentiometer to turn the throttle up or down from 50 to 100%. And I can dial that potentiometer in right where I want it. So if I've got a 6S and I want to make it a 4S, I set it at 66% or whatever. Now, you can't do that currently with Betaflight. You can set in Betaflight a fixed throttle curve, but there's no... There's no way to modify it in real time. So in terms of like performance or resolution, I don't think there's much of a difference. The throttle curve, I would set it in the Tyrannus because it lets me set it dynamically. Um, the flip side is that Betaflight has the ability to do both a throttle curve and a motor output curve. Now the throttle curve is what throttle position you're demanding. The motor output curve is the actual motor outputs. And the difference is, that the PID controller could command the motors to go to a higher RPM, even if your throttle position is relatively low. So imagine that you do a boom, a snap roll. If you've got the throttle limit, it doesn't matter. The motor is still going to go to this high RPM. So the motor output limit would prevent that. Um, I, th that's, that's sort of a wrap up there. James Rosty wants to know, is the latency on Crossfire the same as FreeSky as it is with Spectrum? Crossfire has lower latency as long as it's in the 150 hertz mode. Once it drops to 50 hertz, the latency goes up. Hold on. There's a, there's a spreadsheet I had saved. Yes. This dude. I met this guy at I.O. I don't remember his name. What's his name? How can I find out the owner of the last edit was on June 11th? Who, who edited it? Well, anyway, thank you to dude who made this spreadsheet because this is freaking epic. Look at this. Um, I guess this is public, right? Can, is this public? I assume it's. I'm, I hope I shouldn't be. I, hope, I assume it's public. Look at this. Let me zoom it in on tip switch. This is latency data, experimental, actual latency data, not just like guesses or or from the manufacturer, and it's from an independent third party. So, let's have a look at what we got here. Is Crossfire on here? No, Crossfire's not on. Oh, here it is, Crossfire. So, here's a graph. Is that helpful? I don't know. Let's see. So, Crossfire latency, Tyrannus, OpenTX, Crossfire, 150 hertz latency. Let's do the uh, average or the median, about 14 milliseconds. 12 milliseconds with the RSky 9X. And with no telemetry, <coughs> pardon me, 50 hertz, it goes up to 30, millisec 30 milliseconds. What happens is that when you're close to yourself, you get you're in 150 hertz, high, high, high sampling rate, low latency. It goes up when you go to 50 hertz. So assuming 150 hertz, Tyrannus latency is around 14 milliseconds. I mean, crossfire latency. If we compare that to, um, let's see, OpenTX D16. 8 channel F port, 25 milliseconds. 25 milliseconds. If you're using the X9 light with OpenTX, the latency actually goes way down, and F port. So you can see the breakdown here, and you can see that under some, under some scenarios, the latency of Tyrannus at 25 milliseconds is similar to the latency of Crossfire. But be careful. That's crossfire at 50 hertz sampling, which only happens when you get a little further away or a couple obstacles, right? But it does, this spreadsheet does show that the picture, if you just take from, if you just go, well, crossfire has better latency. Well, it depends. Not always. And also it's very interesting, uh, hang on, it's very interesting how much difference there is between like F port and where's S bus internal radio? Where's S bus? Here it is. S bus. Look at S bus latency, 26 to 39 milliseconds using eight channel mode. Whereas if we go to F port S bus, let's see, we can get the latency down as low as 16 milliseconds. That's pretty impressive. Also, another thing to take from this is, you know, all those claims that F port has lower latency. 
Nope. F-port has the... I'm sorry, access. That access is lower latency. Nope, not really. Access is about the same latency as anything else. Ouch. Yep. Where's access? Access. I guess this is the only access. Here's Sky 9X access. Here's OpenTX access with F port, 16.5 milliseconds. D16 mode with F port, 16.5 milliseconds. So I don't know what they were talking about when they said F port was low, lower latency. Anyway, kudos, kudos to, dude, I'm so sorry I forgot your name. I met you at IO. We, we shook hands. We talked. I said, that's really great work you're doing. And also you emailed me, but I just can't remember your name right this minute. Whoever you are who is generating this awesome, awesome data, thank you. Thank you very much. Can I share this? Nope. Um, get a shareable link. I'm going to paste the link. To, okay. I'm going to paste a link to this here in the spreadsheet, in the uh, chat, and you can check it out if you want to dig in. Yeah. Yep, I'm dropping the link, UAV Tech. Dropping the link. Pretty cool stuff. Beast Nasty. Beast Nasty 0313. Thank you for $2. What do you think of Rush products? Uh, the Rush VTX is pretty good, um, but aren't Rush products made by Underground FPV? And Underground FPV is kind of struggling right now to support the Nirvana. So if Underground FPV is the one who makes Rush products, then I'm not entirely happy with how you're supporting the Nirvana right now. So I'm not, but they're, they're good VTXs. They're good VTXs. Folks in the Discord are talking about chargers with capacity differences. When you put, if you've got a charger and it asks you how big your battery is, your charger doesn't care how big the battery is. Think about it this way. Let's ima imagine that there was an underground tank of water or gasoline. And imagine that you were tasked with filling up the tank. How big is the tank? You don't know. Could you fill that tank to the very tippy top without knowing how big it is? You could, right? You would just watch as the, as the water came up to the top of the tank. You just keep pouring water in until it came up to the top of the tank. And then you go, okay, it's full. That's an analogy for what a battery charger does when it charges your battery. Your charger doesn't care how big your battery is. It just puts charge into the battery until the voltage comes up to 4.2 volts per cell. So why is it that some chargers make you put in the battery capacity, the milliamp hours? The reason is that the charger, if the battery's damaged, maybe imagine that that underground water tank had a leak you would just keep dumping water into it forever and it would never fill up. And you'd be just like, okay, at some point you'd just be like, I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn the hose off. I don't know where the water's going, but it's not going into the tank. Well, the charger asks you for the capacity of your battery in case the battery's defective. It doesn't want to just keep dumping charge into the battery and maybe cause it to light on fire. So if you have a 1300 milliamp hour battery and your charger asks you how big your battery is, that's just a safety feature. It doesn't actually care. So what I suggest you do is you put in, like, the problem is people have a 1,300 milliamp hour battery. They put in 1,300 milliamp hours as their, as their capacity, and then the battery isn't full at the end. And the reason is that in order to fill a 1,300 milliamp hour battery, that's not 100% efficient. So you're going to put in 1,350 or 1,400 or maybe 1,450 milliamp hours to fill a 1,300 milliamp hour battery. So if you have a 1,300 milliamp hour battery and your charger asks you how big your battery is, tell it like 1800 milliamp hours in fact what i do is i just set it to like 10,000 milliamp hours because i'm like i just I'll, I'll watch the battery don't worry about it okay can i explain frame size versus delay asks jacob bothel i think you're talking about the control links right um the difference is we're talking about end-to-end -end latency versus frame timing frame spacing here's the way i like you to think about it Imagine that I'm going to mail a letter from Atlanta to San Francisco. And imagine that I send one letter every day. The frame spacing is one letter per day. Now imagine that I was going to send one letter every five days. Well, that's a lower frame spacing. But the latency, the end-to-end -end latency is how long it takes from the moment I drop it in the mailbox to the moment it gets to the end. That's the latency. And 
the update rate and the latency are related, right? Um, if I if I have something to tell you, but I'm only sending one letter every five days, then I got to wait for the next letter to go out before I can tell you the thing I need to tell you. That's going to add latency. A low frame timing adds latency. But a fast frame timing doesn't necessarily mean low latency. And that's where like Free Sky Access and Crossfire uh, are misunderstood a little bit. Because you can have a very, very fast frame timing, but at the end of the day, I could drop 20 letters in the mailbox. It's still going to take them three days to get to San Francisco. That's the end-to-end -end latency. And end-to-end -end latency does matter in terms of like, end-to-end -end latency does matter in terms of how the link feels. Some people say, well, you can't feel 20 milliseconds difference in latency. Like, yeah, human reaction time is whatever, 250 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. But when you're talking about continuous motion, you can feel a connectedness, a directness in that lower latency. I definitely believe that to be true. Personally, I don't feel it. I don't feel when my when my crossfire link goes from 50 to 150 hertz. I'm sorry. But there are... If you look at how we started the live stream by looking at Alex Vanover flying through a forest and his insane reaction time. He could probably feel it. Yeah. Mm, okay. Joey Boots FPV says, what's the word from Alex on the antennas? I think you mean Alex Grieve, I'd be crazy, and I think you mean the Aram antennas. Search my channel for the information about that. I'm not bringing that up again. The Aram antenna could here. Okay, okay, fine. The Aram antenna doesn't do any any of the things. I shouldn't say that. I'm not 100 percent sure. The Aram antenna doesn't appear to be as it is described on the TBS product page. The TBS product page says that it's a it's a two linear antennas and it appears to be two circular polarized antennas, and it says that it's omnidirectional, but it appears to be directional. And maybe it's still a good antenna. It's just that it doesn't seem to be what it's described as. So um, I have a video about all the developments in that. Uh, here's a thought I had, though. The Aram antenna, according to Alex Greaves' tests, is a, both a left and a right-handed polarized element. And when I was at I.O., people were saying, have you, have you tried it? It's working great for me. And I thought, well, first of all, you have no obstacles. There's no multipathing. So yeah, it's working great for you, but who knows? So maybe anything would work great. Um, but the other thing is that at IO, they had some channels were left-handed and some channels were right-hand polarized. And depending on what channel you ended up on, you needed to change your antenna to a left or right-hand polarized. If you had an Aram antenna in that environment and you were spectating, that's actually really ideal. Because the pilot on channel one is left hand, the pilot on channel two is right hand. And as you flip between the channels, your Aram antenna has both a left and a right handed element. It's not doing diversity, but who cares? The pilots are only 100 feet away and there's no multipath and no interference. Actually, the Aram antenna could be really good as a spectator antenna or even a pilot antenna in an environment where you are constantly switching between left and right hand polarized antennas. That's the thought I had after after that. Let me see. I was checking back with Alex Grieve to see if he answered the question from earlier in the live stream about why we don't use circular polarized antennas on control transmitters. He hasn't answered that, so I don't uh, I don't have an answer for you there. Dexter Johnson, thank you for five bucks. He says, the event at your house this weekend was so dope and exciting. Thanks for helping me adjust my camera. No problem, Dexter. Dexter, uh, Dex was racing. It was one of his first races, I think, Dex. And I was watching, I was spectating him, and I noticed that his camera was out of focus. And I thought, oh, his lens must have gotten bumped. But then as he was flying, it kept getting worse and worse. And he was doing his best to finish the race. I don't blame him. But the, the lens kept getting worse and worse. And I was like, his lens is going to fall out, and he's not going to be able to see where he's going. And I was like, land, land now. Land now. I made an. I wasn't the race director, but I made an executive decision. I was like, Dex, you got to land, dude. You're about to lose your lens, and then you're going to hit something. So he landed. And then I showed him how to lock his lens in and, and focus his lens. So let's see here. 
Thoughts on the new Cadex Dolphin camera, says Miguel Espinel. Thank you, Miguel, for, for asking that. I saw that earlier and I missed it. Um, the Cadex Dolphin. Cadex Dolphin is a new camera that's coming from Cadex. Ooh, looks pretty, looks pretty impressive, doesn't it? How about that? Yeah, and here's the thing. It's like 40 bucks. Holy, I don't, I don't know what the deal is there. 40 bucks? And somebody told me, uh, like, if you look at the specs for the Dolphin, it has a freaking cloud storage feature. And somebody said to me, it's a freaking home security camera that they put into a box for FPV. So I don't know. At a price of 40 bucks, if it produces decent image quality, it could be okay just as a burner. Somebody's going to buy it for 40, 45 bucks, even though it's only 1080p. But I don't think it's going to be great. I mean, I, I hate to be a hater, Cadex, but it's only 40 bucks. How good could it be? Right? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. 1080-30. Yeah. I mean, it's worth a try for 40 bucks. It's worth a try. But I think it's it, – it, why does it have a cloud storage feature? I think it's somebody somebody who uh, chatted me and they were like, because it's a security camera that they ripped the guts out of and they put it in a box. Caddox didn't invent this. They just repackaged it is what someone said. So we'll see. Okay. Okay. <coughs> All right, guys. Hmm. Drink's done. Mm. Oh my gosh, I have a drinking problem. It's not 40, maybe it's 45, but I distinctly remember that it started with a four. No SD card for the Dolphin. I don't know about that. Does it have an SD card? Nobody knows. We don't know anything about it. We don't, tell me on 10th of July. Well, I guess that didn't, did that happen? Did it drop? I don't. Yeah, there's a micro SD card slot. Yeah, it comes with a freaking. Yeah. Thirty three ninety nine with the Banggood coupon. Holy jeez! Oh, it's under pre order. Okay, it's under pre order. It's not shipping yet. Yeah, it comes with a stick on wall mount, as if it were a security camera. Like why? Why? But anyway, for for forty bucks. Yeah, I guess somebody's going to buy it and use it. Maybe it's not the worst. Like, how good could it be for 40 bucks, though? I'm a little skeptical. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking over at this listing. Alex, I didn't switch scenes. I'm looking over at this listing. You guys didn't see any of that. Thirty nine ninety nine on Banggood. Hotel Bravo wants to know about the release date for the Fat Shark Attitude V5. What I would suggest you do, I mean, they... The problem is that if you didn't pre-order them three weeks ago, you're not going to get it because everybody has sold out of their pre-order. So what you should do is you should reach out to your favorite retailer and ask them, do you have any left? When are they going to come in and when are they going to ship and can I order one? But it's it's really soon because like when I first did the review, I was hearing three weeks from now and that was roughly three weeks ago. So, uh, So it's got to be really soon. $43 diatone stack Warren Pike. Yeah. Let's see here. Diatone Mamba Tower Power. Power Tower Mark II. This is a diatone stack. And I, guys, this is suspiciously low priced. A, a, an ESC alone costing $45, I would be like, wow, that's pretty budget. So the fact that this is a flight controller and ESC for $44, like, I swear I wouldn't be surprised if you buy this and it just lights on fire. But the saving grace is that Diatone has a pretty good track record of not making crap. So if this were if this were HDLRC, I'd just be like, no, stay away. You know, if it was, I won't name anymore. If it was Racer Star, I'd be like, yeah, too cheap, too suspicious. But Diatone has a pretty good track record. So yeah, something to something to think about. Anyway, all right, guys. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up. I finished my drink, and uh, the inevitable that happens when you 
drink a giant mason jar full of uh full of whatever happens so i think i'm gonna wrap up the live stream thank you guys so much for turning out uh i hope you enjoyed the live stream i um sorry about any interruptions in the live stream that happened uh i'll have to have i'll have to have my partner on uh on delivery duty next time so there you go um yeah i got a pizza and a taxi waiting thank you chamber i will be headed to the airport and i will be eating a olive barbecue pineapple and onion pizza while i go hey what are you gonna do um <laughs> we're gonna wrap up though next live stream next live stream will be sunday 1 p.m a week from yesterday uh, do live streams Sunday 1 p.m. and Monday at 8 p.m. So I hope to see you there. More videos coming out this week as always. And uh, that's going to do it. We're going to wrap up. Good night, everybody.